Hi everyone, back to the more YouTube channel. It's Chris back with a match preview for Newcastle United's upcoming game this weekend against Bournemouth. We're down the South Coast. Eddie Howe's old team uh, looking to get back-to-back -back wins in the Premier League. Um, hopefully, Newcastle will get the job done. So, we're going to get stuck into this in a minute, talk about how we think the lads are going to line up, how we think we're going to look, and not many options really for Eddie Howe, and how we think the game is going to go, and talk a little bit about the opponents, Bournemouth, as well. Before we do, a little reminder, if you haven't already, smash subscribe. We'd love you to come and join us. We're over 8,300. I think we're actually over 8,400 now. So thank you so much to everybody who smashed that button. We're really close to 9,000, which is the next milestone. I've got a mint prize for that. We're going to do a video of that soon. I'll tell you how you can win that little bit of Newcastle memorabilia. So make sure you smash that button. Recommend us to family and friends. Why don't you? It's all free to do that. But if you want to be a member, there is an option down there too. And you get early access to all these videos. So let's get stuck in then. So Bournemouth, what have we got in store now? Bournemouth are a funny side because I think they actually did all right last season. I think they finished kind of around about 10th or something like that, didn't they? Um, you know, so they, they look like they're doing all right in terms of they're going in the right direction as a as a team, uh, you know, un, under um, un, under their, their manager, who I will try to pronounce, and I'm terrible at it. Is it uh, Iriola? Is it Iriola? Uh, yeah, well, I might not have done too bad there, actually. Mark's normally a better pronunciation than me, but they seem to be doing all right under him, you know, the... They've lost Dominic Solanke, obviously, which is a big blow to them. But um, they have got Antoine Semenyo, who scored uh, against Forrest in the 89th minute or something to get uh, an equaliser in their opening day fixture. So, you know, they, they played some good stuff. They moved around um, the ball quite well. They've got some speed. So this isn't going to be a walkover for Newcastle by any stretch of the imagination. But you'd like to think, even with the team I'm about to pull up, we'll have enough to get the job done. So this is how I think we're going to line up going down to the Vitality Stadium. Nick Pope in goal, Tina Livramento, Emil Kraft coming in for the suspended Fabian Scher after his nonsensical red card against Southampton. Should have put his head in there, but it was absolute nonsense, really. Yeah, Brett Diaz is playing for Southampton. The pathetic little shithouses that they are have already put a picture of him on social media. I don't know who's doing their admin. What, are you eight years old? Pathetic. I hope they get battered this season. We can week out and go down like Sheffield United did last season. Dan Byrne alongside him and Lewis Hall. There's been shouts for Lloyd Kelly to come in. A bit harsh to Lewis Hall, I think. I think Lewis Hall is a really good young fullback. I think he showed last season that he's learned a lot defensively. He is going to make mistakes. He's a brave fullback, so going forward with the ball is always going to lead to a risk of losing possession. But I think Lewis Hall is going to come very good for Newcastle, so don't write the kid off too early. In midfield, we've got the three of Joe Linton, Bruno Guimaraes, and Sean Longstaff, or Long. Staff, as he says in that lovely video that's doing the rounds, you definitely are pulling one there, Sean. Love it. And the front three. So this is what we think Eddie Howe will go for. This is a bit of a talking point, actually, this week, isn't it? So I think Eddie Howe will go for Anthony Gordon, Alexander Rizak and Jacob Murphy. If it was me personally, I would go with Harvey Barnes uh, and uh, uh, Isaac and Gordon. I don't know what side you put Gordon on, but I would go with my strongest front three goals, get the game put to bed and then bring Murphy on after that. But I don't think Eddie will do that. I think he will go for Murphy. I don't know how Eddie will respond to the um, the the leaks in the press from the Harvey Barnes story. It could be something over nothing. Harvey Barnes might have just said it was representatives. I'm a bit disappointed. I thought it was in good shape. I thought it would have got a game, but, you know, it is what it is. And then the representatives have obviously leaked that out to the likes of Craig Hope, and now it's blown up in the media. So there's a lesson learned there, Harvey. Maybe watch who you're surrounding yourself with. And maybe we shouldn't overreact to these things, you know. But we'll see what happens, when, you know, when Sunday comes. And the lineups there, but I'd be more than happy with, with Harvey Barnes in, in the front three because I think he gets goals and assists as well. But we're looking at Bournemouth themselves going into how we probably think they're going to line up. So the Bournemouth line are probably very similar to, to how they lined up against Nottingham Forest. We've got Neto and goals, Smith, is it uh, Zabarini, Hussein, who's one of the, the summer signs. We've got loads of summer signs actually. We'll get into that in a minute. Kirk Kicks, uh, Cook, Scott, uh, Autoara, Tavenia, who's a little shit house, Siniestra, and uh, Semenio leading. The line that's very similar to how they, they lined up against Nottingham Forest. I'm just going to check how they lined up there. I think it's pretty much exactly the same. Yep, looks exactly the same, to be fair. In terms of what they did against Nottingham Forest, they did put in some good performances. I think Semenyo got off the mark, obviously, what you're looking for. He's not been a prolific goal scorer over his over his career. I'm just looking at his stats there. He has played for the unwashed as well in Sunderland, uh, but I don't think he got any many goals for them, really, did he? Yet? He got no goals in seven appearances. So well done, mate. Did your best not to score, but for Bristol City. 
21 goals, 125 games. He's got 10 and 48 for Bournemouth thus far, 6 and 32 for Newport County. He's not a prolific striker, but he is only 24 years old. He's obviously coming into his game. He kind of played all over the place, wing through the middle, attacking midfield. So he's trying to find a position that suits him. And with Solanke leaving, he is obviously leading the line there. But in terms of how he played against Nottingham Forest, he did look quite dangerous. He held the ball up quite well. His heat map's pretty strong. You know, he moved around quite a lot. Against Forrest, you know, he had a couple of shots and a couple of shots on target as well. Um, 73% pass accuracy. So he did quite well, to be fair. Um, lost the ball a few times, but, you know, attacking players are always going to do that. One of the best players, I think, that the Bournemouth had in that game was both Tavinia and uh, Alex Scott, you know, really getting stuck in as well. Alex Scott uses the ball quite well. He's quite tidy playing 90% pass accuracy in his last game as well. You know, he won 13 of his 18 duels, you know, that, that he had in the game. You know, he, he had, you know, kind of... Dead eight tackles in total there. Um, you know, so that is a strong performance from a midfielder. And I think Tavinia was very similar as well, you know, in terms of his performance. Yeah, 80% passing accuracy on uh, Tavinia um, in terms of his uh, his kind of tackles and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so didn't put as many tackles in uh, as, as Scott, but, you know, still put in a good performance. Uh, as as um, as Bournemouth got the uh, got the uh, equaliser, then drew the game against Nottingham Forest. But in terms of how I think this game is going to go, I mean, without being disrespectful to Bournemouth, who made some brilliant signs, by the way, way more than we have. You know, they signed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine players. Uh, I think they've signed in total there, really. Or if you count Rothwell coming back from a loan deal, I think so. They've signed quite a few players, you know, and I think the likes of uh, Dean Husson was somebody we did a rumor has it, I think, on. I don't know if we actually published that or not, but you know, he's come from, you know, obviously from from playing for Juventus, who's got good experience there. Uh, Evan Ever Neeson from Porto as well, he's got good experience, so he's a centre forward there as well. So they have got some decent signings, you know, in terms of uh, in terms of where they've come from. So I think they are going for it. They are trying to do something, but I'd like to think this Newcastle United team is going to be too strong for them. You know, they have got some width. They've got Clive off the bench as well as a dangerous player. But I think Newcastle's too strong, certainly in the midfield area. I think if Longstaff keeps playing the way he played against Southampton, Joe Linton was magnificent, magnanimous he was against Southampton. He was an absolute monster. Bruno looked a bit off the pace, but I think he'd be stronger for having that 90 minutes in his legs. You know, for, for for this game against Bournemouth, Isaac again the same. Isaac always takes a couple of games to get going. Gordon looked really poor against Southampton. So if we turn up in this game, you know, we could really put Bournemouth to the sword. But one person who's not playing in this game, as you've probably seen, is uh, is Mark Gahey. So that ridiculously long winded transfer still rumbles on to the point where a lot of fans are just absolutely fucking sick of it by now. Um, and amazingly, Newcastle haven't either, either signed a player or signed somebody else. But it looks like they've thrown all their chips into this one player who apparently is going to not just play for Palace tomorrow, start and be the captain, which I think is fucking mental. Yeah, what if he gets injured and he gets fucked? That whole deal's gone. I don't think Palace want to sell the play at Newcastle. And I think this deal's going to fall away to shit. And then you look at who we've got left, you know, with shares, three-match injury, make it part of three-match suspension, Botman's injury, uh, LaSalle's injury. Now, Jamal LaSalle is, is a steady deputy for when somebody's injured, but, you know, he's not this um, pedestal figure of of kind of, um, you know, leadership that people are putting them up because of Eddie's everyone's a captain line. You know, I, I was going to do a little separate video on that, but I couldn't be asked to be honest with you, all the nonsense I got back on X off, off all the, um, the TTP, trust the process, happy clappers. I couldn't be bothered with it, to be honest with you. Might talk about what's going on, depending on how I feel, but, but yeah, you know, this whole thing about the sales, I think he's been blown way out of proportion. Yeah. He's a steady player, but he ain't, he ain't, Fucking Maldini or Beckenbauer, you know what I mean? So get a grip, everybody. But going back to, to the, the here and the now of the game itself, I think your castle would be too strong for Bournemouth. We've got too much quality in the final third, too much, too much resilience and, and, and steel and silk in midfield. You know, I think our full backs will push them back as well with their attack and threat with, with Tino and Hall. So I think Newcastle win this game 2-0, I'm going to say. 2-0 uh, victory, which will be good because if we back-to-back wins in the Premier League, it's a great way to, to start the season. But we have to really try and finish this window strong and sign at least a couple of players, you know, a centre-half if it is Mark Gahey or somebody else or, and a right winger, hopefully. But I've got a bad feeling that if Gahey's the deal that gets done, the right winger position will not be filled. And Eddie will be happy to, to stick with Miggy and Murphy and uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think about that. But yeah, I think Newcastle will win this game 2-0. Uh, I think Bournemouth will make it a really tough game. I don't think it'll be a walkover, especially in front of their fans as well. You know, it's always a difficult game down there. But I think Newcastle will have enough just to see them through to get a 2-0 victory. But let us know in the comments below what you guys think about the lineup, about Bournemouth. 
you think it's going to be a victory for us? You think it's going to be a more difficult game than, than what I'm saying? Um, what you, what are your feelings about the transfer window? Are you completely fed up about it? Because we're all pretty fed up about it, I think, at the minute. They can't wait for it to shut, really. Because uh, Newcastle have had a shocker, uh, had a mare in this transfer window. And one of the better word, you know. And even the TTP guys will be saying that towards the window closing if we have no players coming in. But we always like to hear from you guys. Put a comment in. Leave it above the bell. No need for anyone to get host hostile or, or snippy. If you are a prick, I'll give you the flick. But if you want a football debate, jump in and we always do our best to reply to the comments. As I mentioned at the start, if you haven't already, smash subscribe. Come and join us. All free to do so. If you want to be a member, there is an option down there, which is only $1.99 a month. So you get early access to the videos, you get the previews, you get the rants, you get the rumor hazard videos. You know, if there is any fucking rumors to talk about, there isn't these days at the minute, but never mind. But keep it up more, guys. I'll be back with a post match analysis after the Bournemouth game. Hopefully, the castle have got another three points in the bag. And hopefully, before this window shuts, we'll be talking about some new signs. Have a crack weekend, everybody. We'll see you later. Cheers. 